ask you a question. Please. Would you address an issue that's going on in Adventism now of people who are going back to celebrating part of the ceremonial ritual? Feast days, etc. Would you, I mean, I think it's an issue that needs to be addressed since we're on the subject, if you'd be willing. Because there are many quite intelligent and well-meaning spiritual people in Adventism who are being rerouted on this thing. And I would just, if you would, address that briefly. Um, if you're willing. If, if not, you can, I, I respect whatever, it's your time. How much time do I have left in Sabbath school? <laughs> no, just tell me, what, what do I get? Ten minutes? That's fine. Kent, my wife always gets frustrated with me when, when uh, I ask a question because I'm looking for a certain answer. And when, when people don't give it, she, she looks at me and she says, well, Bill, why don't you just tell the answer you, want, you wanted in the first place? You see? <laughs> um, Ken, I'm going to do my best, okay? I'm going to do my best. There's so many different angles to the feast days. Um, the Apostle Paul in Colossians 2 is very clear that the feast days were all a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ, okay? So every one of the feast days pointed forward to something Christ was going to do. You have the Passover, that pointed forward, as Paul says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5.8, Paul says Christ was our Passover who was sacrificed for us. So the Passover pointed forward to Christ's death. Then you have Pentecost. That was 50 days after the wave sheaf. 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, he began his work in the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So the Pentecostal feast, or 50, pointed forward to Christ's work in the holy place. The next feast was the Feast of Trumpets. That came in the autumn of the year, seventh month, first day of the month. The Feast of Trumpets was a warning blast. We've got 10 days till the Day of Atonement or the Day of Judgment. Well, the Feast of Trumpets pointed forward to the warning message of the Millerites that was given in the 1830s into the 1840s, warning the world that something big was going to happen in 1843-1844. Now, obviously, they misunderstood a portion, but nevertheless, the warning was given so that pointed forward to Christ warning the world that judgment was about to happen. The fourth feast was the Feast of Atonement. That pointed forward to Christ's work in the most holy place beginning in 1844. The final feast, it was the Feast of Tabernacles. That was the final ingathering of the uh, grain and, and the fruits of the orchard at the end of the year. That points forward to the final ingathering of people at the second coming of Christ. So we can see that the feast days all pointed forward, as Paul said in Colossians 2, they were all shadows pointing forward to the body or the substance, which was Christ. Now, one other note on that, in the book of Galatians, Paul faced a group of people who would follow him, who would stalk him, who would hunt him wherever he would go. After he would preach the gospel, then there would be others who would come in with a perversion of the true message. You notice it in Galatians chapter 1. Uh, verse 6 and 7, Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, 
which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Uh, what was the perverted gospel message that was being proclaimed in Galatia? Well, Paul answers it in Galatians 4. Galatians 4, verse 10. This was the gospel message that people were embracing in Galatia. Verse 10, Paul says, Ye observe days and months and times and years. Now in the Jewish economy, see now here we go again. Our evangelical friends will tell us that Galatians 4, that that condemns the Adventists. You know, you observe days, so Paul's condemning Sabbath keepers. That's not what he's talking about there. Because Paul groups together four things in that verse. He says days, months, times, and years. And there was only one thing in the ancient Jewish economy that had all four of those things. Do you know what it was? It was the feast days. They had ceremonial Sabbath feast days. They had new moons. They had uh, set times. And they had sabbatical years or jubilees. So Paul was condemning the first century Seventh-day Adventists who had embraced and was maintaining the exaltation of the Jewish feast days. Paul said, they're over. They were all pointing forward to Christ. Christ has come. Now let's learn from them, but not continue doing them. You know, Paul's comments to the Galatians, and, and this, is, this is a very serious, a very serious warning for us today. Galatians 3, verse 1, Paul said to the Galatians that were involved in feast day keeping, that were involved in circumcision. Notice verse 1, he said, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? That's Galatians 3, verse 1. Now when you think of the word bewitching, what other word immediately connects to that in your mind? Spiritualism. Spiritualism. Folk, there were people in Galatia that were becoming fixated on one idea, and they were making it their gospel. Theirs were circumcision and the feast days. Well, you know, we've outdone the Adventists of the first century, haven't we? Because we have feast days, Yahweh, no Holy Spirit, um, the church is Babylon, a God doesn't kill. Um, tell me another one. Reapplying time in Daniel 12, uh, the 2520. You know, folk, we have fixed, we fixate on ideas and we say, this is the truth that we've got to get out to people. And Paul says, you've become bewitched. That's scary. That's scary. We would never, and I'll get your hand, we would never go and look at a crystal ball, would we? We would never look at tarot cards or have a lady read the lines in our hand. We wouldn't do that, would we? But the devil could get us with a theological spiritualism that makes us feel like we're still following God, but we have embraced and fixated on some idea and made it our gospel. And Paul says you're into spiritualism. That's scary for us as a people because we've got that going on in our midst, don't we? Kent, go ahead. Then we'll close. 
You know, I looked up, and not that I put a whole lot of credibility in this, but this man is mentioned in the Book Ray Controversy, Albert Barnes. <clears throat> she mentions him in the Book Ray Controversy in the positive. Of course, he, there were some things he didn't know, but uh, he's got a very impressive commentary on the New Testament. <clears throat> and I looked up what he said on Colossians 2. He makes a very, very powerful case for the fact that this is the ceremonial law. It's not dealing with the moral law. And it, his I comments there would resonate with Adventism's interpretation of that passage. Uh, well, you know, I, I've thought about this subject some because it's encountered me again. Um, you know, when Jeroboam set up a different place of worship in Dan and uh, was it Samaria, the Bible says that was a sin. It was a rival system of worship. And we've been given very clear counsel and inspiration that this system is now obsolete. And when we go back to it, aren't we really denying Christ? And aren't, and aren't we really diverting people from the, his work in the most holy place and getting them to lean on a system of works merely for uh, the re regeneration and the true Christian experience? It's a huge diversion tactic of the enemy. Absolutely, Tim. Absolutely. I could say a lot about that. Yes. Jerry, go ahead. I was just going to say, Ken kind of hit on it right at the very end. I had kind of into this a few years back. And as, I, as it came about, those people who engage in observing the feast days and trying to push it upon others, they verily, in truth, deny that Christ died for them. And, and in practicing that, they deny Christ, and they don't even realize that they're doing it. I had studied that in Galatians 3 because it says you've become bewitched before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. They had rejected Christ and they embraced the feast days. I was in a camp meeting a few years ago in Arkansas and a young man after a meeting I did on Daniel chapter 11, before, right after I said amen, I was getting up off my, my knees and I saw the guy's shoes. You know, he, he had gotten up to the platform that fast. By the time I got to my feet, he said, what do you think of the, the Godhead? Okay, and he could have said, what do you think of the feast days or any of these other things? Well, I said, well, sir, what do you think of it? Well, I knew exactly what he thought of it. And I thought, as he was talking, I thought, I'm not going to argue with this guy about it. When he got done, I took Gala I was thinking about Galatians 3, and when he got done, I looked at him square in the eyes, and I said, Sir, tell me, have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Are you in submission to him, and is he empowering you to obey? You know what happened when I said that? He was looking at me when I started and when I got done, he was like that. He didn't have to say a word. But that's exactly what's going on. We are rejecting Christ when we embrace these perverted gospels. Just that.